All right, let's uh, let's try and settle down here. The uh, I'd like to remind people that the sign-up sheet is making its slow way around the room. Is there anybody else left here who wishes to either give or receive a sticker for the sticker book? Uh, thank you. And uh, anybody wanting a business meeting fandom sticker now has to wait till the end because I've got them up here now. Here. I mean, not <coughs> here, but uh, really. <coughs> okay, uh, that's not so bad. It's 10.30, 10.33. The meeting will return to order. And we have the rest of site selection business. The first thing I want to deal with is some stuff from the host convention. Um, I think uh, Mr. Pomeranz and then the rest of them, then the defined me itself, Mr. Pomeranz had a statement regarding the Hugo Awards he wanted to give. I, I do appreciate the... Uh, Would you come over and stand on the X here so it's in shot in the official record? I'm sorry. Oh, my God. I appreciate the uh, meeting's indulgence. Uh, I neglected uh, last night at all possible opportunities to acknowledge the person who did the most work on the Hugo Awards. And I would like um, Joyce Hooper to stand for a moment. Our Hugo administrator for this year. And uh, I thank the meeting's indulgence, and I especially thank Joyce for her hard work. All right, and at this point, I'd like to call on uh, representatives of this year's Worldcon, who I believe have some information, additional information for us. Together we have to stand on the spot to remember. Peggy Ray Sapienza. And uh, you know where you are. Goman Nizai, we have not turned in our financial report. There are a few things we've been doing. No <laughs> excuses, but we will turn it in soon. We have many apologies. We hope you have had. I'm sorry that the report's not uh, finished yet, just as uh, Peggy Ray just mentioned. There are several items regarding finances that are still under negotiation. Uh, so we hope to uh, present our report on our website within a month or two. Uh, so again, our apologies. But uh, we will uh, thank you for understanding. We will also send an official copy of it to Pat McMurray and Kevin Stanley and the other appropriate people in the US, as well as putting it on the website. Thank you. Thank you. We also just want to thank everybody for coming. I remember the time not that long ago, maybe a year ago, when we were being told, oh, you won't get 200 people from outside of Japan. <laughs> we are very pleased that you've come. We hope you've had a wonderful time and got to see some of this glorious country and work with the wonderful people. How many do you have? That, that's, it's coming, it's coming. Okay. The attendance figure's coming after you yield the floor. Okay. We'll the I am ready to yield the floor. The secretary has something to say before we call the line. Um, I would just like to mention that we, wait Peggy Ray, this is for you. I would just like to mention that um, the offices of the business meeting Additionally, allow an, an additional indulgence to the current Worldcon, who may indeed be slightly busy. <laughs> and as far as we're concerned, providing the report is actually received before the start of the next year's business meeting, we'll consider it on time. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Mr. Glazer has a report on attendance figures, I understand. As of 9.30 this morning, we have a total number of badges issued of 
2,692, of which 1,818 are Nihonjin, or living in Japan, and 874 are from the rest of the world. Thank you very much. Let's see now. Okay, we're about to move to the uh, first of the question times that are the next question time, but I do want to remind people that it is in we intend, if it works out, to have the uh, photo session for former Worldcon chairs at the conclusion. Uh, after this meeting is over, we'll get the, uh, the photo op for Worldcon chairs because it uh, uh, won't be easy to, it can't be done at the uh, chairs party, there's too many chairs leaving. And also the, photo, the lighting conditions are a lot better in here. Um, also, after that's done, the Mark Protection Committee uh, will be meeting, and I didn't write, I know, I know Montreal appointed somebody, so we'll, we'll, ah, yes, thank you. So we'll deal with that. Okay, it is now question time. Oops, I'm sorry. Did what I miss? Four point three. No, I, uh, it, this was something issue resolved earlier. Meaning is that all the items listed under five are are at this point considered question time. Now, if the meeting wants to suspend the rules and take that up out of order, I could go to it. But um, after a long discussion, everything under heading five has to be dealt with before we get back to four as a special order of business. Question time for the other seated Worldcon. I uh, would like to invite Mr. Bloom to come on up here and uh, let me see, let's review the procedures for question time. Yeah, you have five minutes to give a statement and then ten minutes for questions and people should keep their questions short and to the point. Mr. Bloom. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, actually, I don't think I'll make a statement except to say that there is a program item tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, I think it's in this room or it's in this neighborhood somewhere, uh, where we will be making presentations for uh, 2008 and future world cons. So if you have detailed questions, either stop by our table in the exhibition hall or come to tomorrow morning's uh, panel. Questions? Are there any questions? If you want to, if you want to ask a question, you need to stand up now. This is your last chance. No. Uh, Mr. Doherty. If you want to ask a question on the record of the business meeting at question time, thank you. Um, when will we get our first progress report? I wish I could tell you that because it's due six weeks ago. Uh, it, the editor has had a problem with his computer. He is promising us that it will be in the, at the printer uh, this week. But then he promised us it would be at the printer last week. So, uh, real soon now. The second progress report will be out uh, at the end of the year. Have a new progress report in there. <laughs> Are there any other questions for Dimension 3? Um, um, Mr. Johnson. Quick question. Uh, now that PDF is uh, practically a universal means of distributing stuff, could it be taken that uh, any member entitled to something distrib distributed would get it by PDF unless you specifically asked otherwise? Uh, actually, we're doing it somewhat the reverse of that. On our uh, membership forms, there is a, a, check bo a tick box where you can request to have your pro progress reports and other, uh, other material delivered by PDF. Uh, we will be posting the PDFs to the website. At the moment, approximately 500 out of our 2,000 members have requested PDF delivery. The rest will be receiving mail. Any others? Yes, Mr. Klein. When will uh, hotel bookings be available? In the second progress report. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> Mr. Barkley. There was some discussion at SmartCon on the number of distribution of your hotels. Can you give us an update on where they are and how far they are from the convention center and how many rooms they are? <coughs> approximately. Uh, approximately. Approximately, we have 1,400 rooms uh, currently blocked. Uh, 1590. 1590, okay. That, that's, I keep forgetting that a little bit. We have seven different hotels. The closest one is across the street from the convention center, and the furthest one is about half a, uh, half a mile away uh, on a uh, shuttle bus route. Mr. Glazer. Can you give the name of the closest hotel, please? The uh, Hyatt Regency. Uh, <coughs> 
Mr. Von Thorne. <laughs> is that the party hotel? No, it's not. It is not. The closest hotel is not the party hotel. Awesome. Tell me which one it is. The Adams Mark will be the party. How far is that? Uh, it's six blocks, but uh, three tenths to four tenths of a mile, depending on which which entrance you go from and to. How many stand leads is that? No, wait, please. There are enough people in this room that I cannot take questions just called out at random. Mr. Yellow. Uh, supplemental information with respect to that. It is supplemental information with respect to that is that as of when the PR comes out, it is almost certain that that will not be the Adams mark. Uh, the sale is expected to close in the next two weeks. Ah, yeah, it's true. Already. The name is likely to change, although I don't think that they've told us what it's going to be. Yeah. No, of course. It's a sheriff. It'll be it, a sheriff. It will be a sheriff. Oh, sure. Um, any other? Okay, you. Uh, uh, I, oh, I would say that we do have a detailed map with all the hotels marked on it at our table in the exhibition hall, and I'll try and remember to bring a copy with me tomorrow morning so we can point it out. But it's complex enough and uh, distributed enough that it, it, it's not easy to explain it uh, verbally. Okay, now, you had a question? Stand up, please. Oh, I was just wondering about the distances in the traditional measurement of Stanley's. <laughs> I haven't been to Denver yet. <laughs> if they want to pay me to come. <laughs> Kevin, you know the way this works. Of course I do. Uh, I'd be delighted to have you come to any of our meetings, but. Well, yes. Uh, Unfortunately, my company doesn't have an office in Denver. There. <laughs> Thank you. I was just uh, curious um, about the state of of your compound and staff, how do you have as a charter organization to deal with it? I suggest that you look on our website. The, charter, the, the, the organization changes almost daily as we are continuing to recruit, and we hope that many of you will also volunteer if you haven't already volunteered. Uh, again, you can do that at our table. Any other questions? Okay, hearing none, we thank you. Per the chair's previous ruling, there is enough time to have. That's interesting. I just noticed that. The, yeah. It still says 2009 here. You're the wrong. You're the year wrong. The five three four. We didn't update the bed for agenda. Uh, presentation by bidders, and that ought to be for uh, 2010. Is it item 3.1? Well, when you reuse the same document over and over again, and therefore uh, we only know of one. 2010 bidders, so if uh, representatives from the Australia bid like to come up and answer questions, this is five minutes. And uh, Ms. Mitchell, if you'll come on. Hi, um, I'm Rose Mitchell, and I'm the treasurer of the 2010 bid. Um, I probably, you're right, like Mr. Bloom said, is that um, there'll be a session tomorrow where we'll have a big presentation and go into more details about what we're doing. So I'll just take questions. Are there any questions of the Australia World Combat at this time? Yes, Perry. Yes, yes, sorry. Dr. Sorry, Dr. Uh, what, 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 <laughs> what are the laws regarding smoking in public places in Australia? <laughs> <laughs> Apologies. The chair, the chair notes he was in fact starting to cough before the question. <laughs> uh, as you are probably all aware, the um, bid is for Melbourne in 2010. In July this year, Melbourne passed a law that there was no smoking indoors in any venues, including hotels, bars, restaurants, any public place. People will still stand around outside, of course, and smoke on the street, but that is being discouraged as well. <laughs> Any other questions? Mr. Glazer. How long does it take to fly from Japan to, uh, to Melbourne? From, say, Tokyo from New York? Uh, Tokyo to Melbourne? Yeah. I fly uh, tomorrow. Seven and, and a half hours. hours. Ten and a half hours tomorrow? All right. Ten and a half hours hours nonstop. Any there other are, are direct flights from Tokyo and Osaka to Melbourne? Any, any other questions? It's 15 hours from the west coast of the USA. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you.
I I don't yeah. Let me see. Yeah, I think we'll go ahead and do just 2011, but no further years after that. All right, we have we have. I don't want to keep people. Actually, yeah, I'll, say, I'll I'll take a statement for a, a short statement from 2011 uh, for uh, I guess Seattle has something someone here wants right and then if there's anybody wishing to make formal announcements of Worldcon bids uh, for any year I, I'll go ahead and make those as well. So we like everyone else will be at the position tomorrow. Um, I'm sure most of you have heard that Seattle that is bidding for 2011 for our downtown conference center. We're going to be using the hotels right there in downtown. We won't be making the Sheraton the party hotel. It is the same uh, core group of people that run Cascadia Con. I'll chair the bid at the convention. Um, that's fine, that you're just, I mean, we'll take an announcement at this point. You can, you can take questions to the panel on this. Are there any other groups wishing to make formal announcements regarding a Worldcon or Worldcon bids? Uh, yes, come on up here. Mr. Dave, no, I'm sorry, okay, I'm reading the badge in the wrong format. Yes. Mr. <laughs> Mr. McCarty. Hi. Uh, many of you know me, my name is Dave McCarty. Uh, I'm from Chicago. And uh, just to repeat, as was announced at SMOFCON, Chicago is intending to rebid for 2012. Uh, we have not yet nailed down facilities, so I can't tell you much more than that at the moment. But uh, we will be starting our work in earnest and out on the trail in about uh, one or two years. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, so just two thoughts. Right, sorry. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Doherty. Since I'm frequently asked this question, um, <laughs> although no formal announcement, uh, there will almost certainly be a UK or European World Combat for the period 2014 2015. There will be a convention, runners convention in the UK next summer, at which discussions will take place regarding that. And just for information, all of Britain and Ireland are now no smoking. <laughs> Thank you. I, yes, I have been. I have been running pretty fast there. Okay, one last chance for official announcements from Worldcons, Worldcon bids, what have you. So you can still kill each other. You just can't smoke. <laughs> okay, that deals with question time. It is exhausted uh, at that point. Let me see now. That takes us back. Words through the agenda to where are we? Four three three. Yes. Four point three point three, and now I got to go to. I got to use my separate handout that's gotten hung up in here. Just saying. I mean, separate page is what. All right. Yeah, there's no way. There's no way. The, the chair does observe we did hear nothing here from Archon this past year's NASFIC regarding financial reporting. We will try and hang them for something, but it's the usual problem with any WISFIS report. We, we ask for you to report. Okay. Item 4.3.3 is entitled One Vote Wonders, and it is on a page in your schedule programs. It's uh, two pages following page five. It uh, is moved to amend section 3.1.4 of the Wisconsin Constitution. It adds a, uh, a clause to the end of the section. This is the section that in, uh, requires the Worldcons to give out uh, a list of what uh, entities, what it, I'll, I'll say works, although it does include any possible nominees, uh, that get nominations up to the top 15. Uh, it would require that in order to show up on that list, you have to have received at least five nomination votes. This motion was submitted by, uh, well, uh, initially made by Ms. Hooper, and who as the, uh, the speak, the debate time on this is 10 minutes, and Ms. Hooper, as the maker of the motion, you get to speak to it first. Uh, I'm not going to oblige you to come up here if you don't want to, but you can stand, uh, if you, do you want to defer to Mr. Daugherty? Uh, I will, just because it's going to be Okay, Mr. Darley is seconder, so you can make the opening statement. You can, you can either come up here or stand there, which one we should do. As Joyce is the administrator, she's asked me to speak on her behalf of this thing. Very, very briefly, as you're probably aware, in the Constitution it requires that within 90 days after the convention, the list of nominations for the Hugos, uh, the, the first 15 nominations be listed 
um, in some publicly available way. Uh, typically, that's actually released just after the ceremony, and if you have a green copy, you'll see uh, this year's. Um, because of some miscommunication with the, um, the printing, in fact, in some cases it's less than 15, and in some cases a lot more than 15, that's just a basically a large typographical error. <laughs> the, uh, the, the basic point about this is that for some of the categories, uh, by the time you get down to, say, the 10th nomination, you're down to a very, very small number of nominations. So you can have, a, you know, five people with four nominations, 15 people with three nominations, etc., all the way down. If you look at, for instance, at Fan Writer, uh, you know, there's a large, there's a large tail, and then there's some others as well. This is basically a, just a, a minor tidying amendment, just to save, well, save a few trees, if nothing else, um, and just to require a minimum number of five nominations to appear on this also run list. The uh, chair would like to observe, particularly if you picked up a copy of the agenda just uh, today, that this uh, there, the grammatical error in the amendment was corrected before it was submitted. This motion is nominally, it is officially to add the phrase, but not including any candidate receiving fewer than five votes. <laughs> <laughs> is there anyone who wishes to speak against this amendment? Anyone else wishing to speak to the, Mr. Bloom? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to just point out that it isn't usually a problem. Once in a while, there's a long tail. But as Mr. Lorenz pointed out on SMOPS, as a former Hugo administrator, it's not usually an issue. There are only a couple of categories where that uh, it makes a much difference. So this really isn't a very important change. And there is considerable ego boo in being appearing on the also ran list. And it is especially true in those categories where the, 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 the two and three vote or two and three nominations uh, will, will actually get you into the top 15. Uh, so I think it probably isn't really, I, I mean, I'm sort of, sort, sort of a little bit opposed to this. <laughs> in speeches in, in favor of Ms. Hooper. There is another point that might be also important here, or at least it should be looked at in that. Um, as we are trying to get the Hugo better known out there, to get it up there, and people look at these numbers, and they see numbers like three, we're dropping down to reporting to three, in their visual mind and in your eye as you're looking at that marketing and, and looking at that, you're going, why do they have such a small sample to be working with? Um, you also have to look at the opinion of those people outside of fandom. We want the Hugo to be more. We want it to be the award for science fiction and such. And when they look at our sample size, it really isn't that large. And it's a nice way to kind of tidy up and maybe hide a little bit of a little bit of faults or misgivings that could come out of that. And that's another way of also approaching it. Uh, speech against the motion. Yes. Um, Mr. Hertz. Um, Ms. Hooper, whom I love dearly and who has treated me very well personally, he has uh, just changed my mind against this amendment. I, I think that with, with deep respect to you, I don't think we should be looking to change the opinions of newspaper people. Uh, every time we've moved in that direction against our best interests, it's hurt us. The Hugos are what they are. The numbers are what they are. When people nominate or don't nominate, they, they do this wisely or unwisely. That, that's almost beyond the power of, of controlling by rules. Uh, I'm part of, well, I'm aware of various controversies which can't be solved by many of the rules. I think Mr. Bloom, as is often the case, has the better wisdom that while this was a pain in Ms. Hooper's anatomy, Charming's not an anatomy of the it often isn't a problem. And uh, perhaps this really is an unwise amendment. Speech in favor, Mr. Yellow. Um, I agree completely with the <laughs> sentiment that says we should not change our rules in an unwise way merely to accommodate the outside world. Uh, that does not mean that we should not accommodate the outside world in ways that make our awards stronger without harming the underlying importance of our message within fandom. Yes, within fandom is our primary audience. But the Hugos, as with everything we do, have many audiences. And 
changing it in this way, i.e. getting rid of the onesies, twosies, does not harm us within fandom and helps us outside. So I'm very much in favor. Okay, a speech uh, that was in favor. Speech against? Mr. Zell? Um, that Mazel. Uh, Mazel's? Yeah, that works. Mazel's. I, I got it. No, it's good. It's good. Everybody encourage it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually have a question of the makers of the motion. Um, I wish to know if they had considered alternatives to simply striking off the list. Since they've talked about trees, there are some alternatives such as the following candidates received fewer than five votes, or the following number of candidates received fewer than five votes. Yes, we've which, done this year. Uh, which, uh, which, uh, which would, uh, no, in this year's, in this year's um, nomination sheet, in fact, there is excruciating detail, and that's what takes up a lot of room. I'd like to know if they had considered alternatives that would save room whilst not removing necessarily the ego boo or the practical information. Mr. Mazel, uh, Mazels? Mazels. 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 Yes. yes. If think red spots in the face. Measles. 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 And I'm not the one who died last night. I know. Night. Yes. I was wondering about it. Mr. Meisel, the if you want an answer to this, you have to use up you have to yield your own debate time for them to answer it. Do you want or do you wish to do you wish to yield to the to one of them to answer your question? I think the correct answer to that is yes. Yes, okay. In his debate time, do either the either the makers of the motion wish to answer the question? In all honesty, I did think about that, but I was looking for something that was more of a solid answer, something that would easily be represented. Um, I'm not having an objection to the other alternative, which is actually basically saying the same thing. All we would do would be a secondary, only, it would be a secondary motion on not a motion, a statement mm -hmm. after that saying, we will list only five and higher, but we will say that there are others below. I mean, it just seemed a little bit more complicated in speech in order to make that work and function properly. Does that make sense? Oh dear. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're, you still have the floor, Mr. Uh, in that case, I would like to propose an amendment. <coughs> okay. Um, the word in which I don't have it mean, to hand. I'll see if I can. Yeah, what are you trying to get accomplish that? I'm trying to accomplish that that some mechanism be provided to indicate the number of votes less than five. Mm -hmm. The number of nominations less than five. Do you want to see? Is it here? Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe that uh, my colleague wishes to move to amend to say that the reporting should include the following statement. Oh, what was that? I'm sorry. Try again. But I, I, we, we got distracted. I apologize. I'm sorry. Do I have time for that? No. Okay. <laughs> um, um, the, uh, I believe that my, I, and I'm only rephrasing here. I'm not just using I'm just language here. I believe that my colleague wishes to move to amend to say that the reporting should include the following statement. The following nominations received less than five, less than less than five, or less than or equal to five votes, and followed by a list of those that did. Is there a second to this amendment to add these add words to this effect? Okay, then, that, then we do need to finish cleaning the wording up on it. Is that what you want? Yes. Okay. We're working on we're working on getting that transcribed here. What did you get out of that? Okay, the secretary is going to have to... Okay, move to amend by adding the following sentence to the original. Move... Okay, what I think you're saying is that we're moved to amend by... Go ahead. Move to amend the following sentence... I'm sorry, so go on. Excuse me. Move to amend by adding the following sentence to the original. The reporting should include a statement that the following candidates, nominees, nominees, received fewer than five votes. Fewer. Yeah, it's fewer. 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 It is fewer. 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 Do we five are fewer? No, it's fewer than five. No, it doesn't matter. 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 It doesn't
clarity is more important than the, than the partial or total order. And this is to, is that to replace the amendment or no, to, add, to add to add to the amendment an additional sentence? Right. That doesn't make sense. That, that, well, yeah, that wouldn't work. That would say something like the line to me was in six years. I think we all know what that works. <laughs> I, I would suggest the difference <coughs> currently says but not including any candidate receiving fewer fewer than five votes. I suggest it say but not including the number of votes received by any candidate receiving fewer than five votes. Uh, I can't be much more fair. Yeah. It'd be better it'd be better just to specify including only the names of candidates receiving fewer than five votes. Which would be a positive <laughs> statement. <laughs> Okay. The, the chair believe I mean, without without any rancor intended here, the chair is going to use that. There's a, there's a rule that would, would make that uh, that says I can rule out of order motions that would make a motion incoherent. Okay. And the chair the chair is going to rule that the amendment would, the amendment would would make it. Yeah. We, time has been expired. As you, but the but the amendment is out of order on the grounds it would make the proposal incoherent. So, in other words, what you really want to do... If, if you want to do something about this, you're going to need to come back with a, a better worded proposal next year, honestly. Right. Exactly. Okay. Uh, so, the, the amendment is out of order, and I believe we've used it all the time completely. All, all debate time on this motion has uh, expired. Are there motions to extend it? Okay, then the question is on the uh, proposal to add the words but not including any candidate receiving fewer than five votes to the end of section 3.11.14. I'm going to try by a show of hands first and count it if necessary. All those in favor of the constitutional amendment, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed, raise your hands. Hands down. The affirmative has it. The uh, motion is adopted. Uh, the amendment is adopted and passed on to Denver for uh, ratification. As the presiding officer for next year's business meeting, uh, I would just give a preliminary indication that I believe that some of the changes that have been discussed would be considered to make this a lesser change, and therefore are uh, likely to be in order next year. <coughs> okay, I believe that has exhausted all business on the agenda. <laughs> Uh, announcements at this point before we adjourn. Announcements at this point. Uh, in a few minutes, once we've cleared enough space and assuming we actually have enough chair, uh, uh, work, former WorldCon chairs here to make it worth our effort, well, we'll take the shot anyway. That we intend to take the uh, formal photo session of the, uh, the, the, the formal photo session of former WorldCon chairs, followed by the Mark Protection Committee meeting. And uh, this is the final business meeting. We have completed all business at this time. There is no need for further sessions of it. And I want to thank you all for being indulgent of my foibles and uh, reasonably well behaved. And, and this time I do mean reasonably, unlike what I was called to order to the last time I presided using that phrase. It is 11.05 a.m. and the business meeting of the 65th Worldcon is adjourned sine die.